streaming online at WROIFM.com, streaming online, RTC Channel 5, and soon to have a video, RTC Channel 4. Hello again, Scott. Hello, Tom. Uh, nice to have you back with us. Good to be here. You have your own coffee cup now in the studio. Yes, That's sir. important. That's very important. And, of course, if you have a smartphone or an Android, you can download the TuneIn Radio app or an app similar to that. Take us wherever you're going. We're pleased to welcome the studio, the president and CEO of Woodlawn Hospital, and that's Mr. John Alley. Good morning. Good morning. That's kind of a nice segue. We Thank had the you. ad for the sleep studies, and then I come Move on. Right you guys are and we're just, still awake. And we're still awake, <laughs> yes. There's something to be said for that. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Woodlawn Hospital, Board of Trustees, etc. Had a board yesterday. meeting yesterday. Uh, you know, it's uh, kind of we're setting a trend here. We're they're being about an hour and a half, which is kind of nice. Uh, get a lot done in that time. I think it's just uh, you know we're pretty well prepared when we have the meetings, and uh, so we had some updates yesterday. We had a couple presentations from our directors. Uh, our policy is if the capital expenditure exceeds a, a dollar limit, the board has to approve that which is a nice check and balance. It, it kind of keeps everything in, in the playing field here so that you know the hospital just can't go hog wild and just spend all the money that we don't have. So uh, we had Rita Alt came in from the lab uh, for a new hematology analyzer. The one we have is quite old and it's a very uh, critical component of our, does all the blood studies. So the board uh, went ahead and they approved that purchase and then Mike Purdue came in and there's been some changes to what we call our life safety standards which are standards that we have to meet that's by an outside regulatory agency and we have a medical vacuum uh, you know we use that some of the changes we made there our current system is no longer certifiable so now we've got to replace that and there's some other things that we know is going to be coming up next year or so where they've changed the rules so what we've had in place for quite a few years will no longer meet the new standards so we have to be changing some of those out board did approve both those requests and uh, you know uh, reluctantly, they said, "Well, you know, is it still good? Well, it's still good, but right. you know, regulation says we right. can no longer use that." So expensive right. request. It, it's not too bad. The the vacuum pump was about fifteen thousand okay. dollars for it, but once it's installed, it has to be then our whole system has to be recertified because it's used for medical. So you know, maybe they kind of give you the unit, but they charge quite a bit to install and certify it. So you know, that's yet to come. We've got a, uh, looking for a couple quotes on the installation. And not everybody can install it. You have to be a, a certified installer since it is being used for patient care. So uh, that's be coming up here. Hopefully next week or so we'll get all the bids in for the install. And, and I, it almost looks like the install is going to be more expensive than the equipment. But that's what it is. And sure. We have to have to deal with it and move forward. You just don't have any choice. We have no choice no. in this one because right. regulation says you must you know, right. update your system. One of the other things that we kind of put in place uh, early in this year was when we have these type of projects and a director comes in and says I need a new this or a new that we're asking them to come back about six months later give us an update you know you said here's what it's going to do how's it doing that so we had uh, Lenny Whitney came in and we uh, got some new life packs about six months ago which is the defibrillators the machines that go on the crash carts and stuff like that okay. uh, so where are we at with those and she brought the board update they've only been in service now about a month or so even though they were purchased six months ago there were some issues with some of the, the probes that go on there. What they sent was not compatible with some of our other equipment, so we had to send the equipment back. So it just has taken some time to get them in service. But we've now got the, them in place. Staff has been trained on the new life packs and uh, moving forward. So it's kind of nice that the board can have that opportunity to say, you know, you, you came in and give your presentation kind of the pro forma. Here's what we think this stuff's going to do. Come back later what's it really doing is it meeting some of those projections that we presented to the board and uh, you know it kind of helps us then to also follow up on that because sometimes out of sight out of mind and, and we approve a project if we don't go back and look at it you, you know is it doing what we thought do we need to tweak it so it's kind of nice now that the board is saying we just want to know how things are going and uh, it went pretty good uh, like i said life packs are now in place and operational okay good new ct scanner is installed uh, got all that finalized, uh, I think it was Saturday. So is it operational? It's operational. Okay. We're seeing patients uh, with the new CT scanner now. And uh, again, what that does is allows us to much, much lower dose of radiation, uh, which is the benefit of the patient. Good so, for everybody. You know, yeah, it's good for everybody. You know, as we discussed a few months ago when we were talking about this, your radiation is cumulative. Uh, every time you have an x-ray, every time you have a CT scan, it adds to that, to the click. And uh, so we want to, what can we do to help reduce that radiation exposure over your lifetime? And with the new CT scanner, it's really going to allow us to 
give quality studies, which a much lower dose of radiation. So you know it doesn't affect you as you know get later in life like myself. You know if we've had a lot of CTs, we've been exposed to a lot of radiation, and uh, it just kind of prevents that from building up. Finally, got into after that into the financial report for the month of August. We had gross revenue about 10.5 million for the month. Uh, wrote off 6.4 million in our deductions from revenue, so that kind of left us about 4.2 million of uh, cash, so to speak, that we could spend and had operating expenses of 4.4. So we did experience a small loss again for month of August, about 212,000. Had anticipated about a $100,000 loss. So we we're a little higher than what we thought we was gonna be for the month. Um, you know, that's second month in a row and kind of project September. It looks like we might show another loss in September, which is this time of year, we should start seeing a turnaround now as we get into October and the fall. Hopefully we'll start seeing some uh, profitable months coming back in, get the hospital back on the the black side for a, a year to date. Are we are we black side year to date? No, uh, we're about I think it's 105,000 okay. to the loss year to date. Okay. So, you know, it's not a lot, but it's something we are conscious of. Let's get us back on the plus side as we move toward year in. Also discussed with the board some things that uh, a few months ago we got some information some of our accrediting agencies give us some recommendations. And when they give a recommendation, you almost have to say that's a requirement. And you know, when they recommend you do something, if you don't do it, it comes back to haunt us later on. And there was some valid things that we just kind of take it for granted over time, and that's building security. Uh, we started doing an internal look at, at our building, and we had a lot of access points into the building that uh, weren't weren't locked. So you know, there's four or five spots where unmanned, you could just, anybody could walk in that door at any time. So we're working to get that changed, and the, you know, folks will notice some changes coming up as November 1st is going to be kind of our date when we ha want to have this all accomplished. At that point, the only two public access points to the hospital will be the visitor entrance on the front side and the registration emergency room entrance. Okay. Uh, the surgery entrance on the back side, as long as that's staffed and there's people back there, that door will be available. But once all the patients are gone and the registration and there's nobody in that part of the building, then we're going to restrict access through that door also. And it's just kind of the right thing to do. Uh, we, you know, kind of they put the scare in you, they send you a video showing things that's happened around the country at other hospitals. And, you know, we're kind of here in Rochester and you don't think that's going to happen, but when we look at these videos, it's a lot of small towns are having some very major issues with open access to their building. And, you know, we just want to make sure it's safe for our patients, our visitors, and our staff. So we're going to kind of tighten down the access to the building a little bit, and we'd like to make it, uh, you know, a couple points you can get in, helps us control then what happens in that building. Do you have a security committee, John? We, we kind of do. We've got, okay. uh, it's, it's called our safety committee, and it's comprised of about 12 individuals, which is various folks from across the hospital. Uh, you know, I'm on that as a, a, an advisor, uh, you know, our security folks, our maintenance, so we have a lot of folks there that uh, we run these things by and say, okay, let's get input from everybody. What what do we need to do? So it's it's kind of a committee that looks at this. We do a lot of safety walks through in the building to make sure that we are providing a safe environment for patients, staff, and visitors. And this was that one thing I you know we kind of just overlooked. We took it for granted. Well, nothing's going to happen here. Well, I'd rather it keep that way. So we're going to be a little more proactive and let's let's go ahead and secure the building before something happened, rather than look back and say, we should have done this. Fulton County, not too long ago, hired a security officer. Would that have any bearing on Woodlawn Hospital? Uh, is that something you might consider somewhere down the line? You know, that is, that's come up a lot. And, uh, you know, yes, that we're not to that point yet, but, you know, it is being kicked around in our safety committee that do we need to have, a, you know, an off-duty law enforcement as a security officer in our building? And, and you hate to say it, but we're seeing more and more folks come in that are uh, violent in nature. Um, there's, you know, some folks that have some maybe mental issues that are showing up, and you just don't know, you know, how do we handle those folks in a safe manner? So that has come up, and I, you know, unfortunately, I think the day is going to come some point in the future where we're going to be required to have some sort of armed security in, in the building, and it's you hate to think of that in a hospital. But again, as we start looking at some of the statistics that's happened across the country, hospitals are becoming one of the more hazardous workplaces in this country because of workplace violence, or you've got folks you know, coming into the hospital to do harm to patients that are in there, and it's just escalating. And uh, 
you know, our position is, again, we'd rather be ahead of the curve than behind the curve on something like that. Be proactive and let's, let's make for a safe environment for everybody before we have an incident. And of course it is a public facility. It's a public facility and you know it's uh, used to years ago the good old days you know you could restrict visitations yeah, and just have right. visiting hours. Uh, now with the changes that the government has said you have to have open visitation so we have to allow people in and out 24 7 and you just don't know what's going on in in their home life where they might be an inpatient for whatever reason. Is somebody going to come in want to do them harm, do the staff harm? So we got to be prepared for that and you know work toward those things and make a safe environment. Okay. That was pretty well the board meeting. Okay. Uh, looking ahead to next month, any particular items that might be cropping up? Yeah, I don't think so. You know, we kind of discussed, we have what's called our leadership meeting, which is every other Tuesday or every other Wednesday. And, uh, you know, we kind of looked at that and said, okay, for this year, we've probably spent all the money we need to spend. So we told the directors, if you got stuff that you're wanting to buy, you're going to have to put it in your back pocket and hold on to it. We'll look at it next year. Uh, you know, with the, the losses we've had for a couple months, it's just prudent to kind of slow things down, make sure we have a recovery so we can then put some money back in the infrastructure come next year. Board member Nancy Day reappointed. Yes, very happy to see that happen. Uh, you know, Nancy, uh, she helps me keep a couple of other board members in line. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it's just, it's nice when you have somebody come back that has the experience that, that Nancy has. And all of our board members have been on there long enough now that they're extremely valuable to me because they know what's going on. And we were t discussed this a little bit yesterday. A couple board members said, you know, this is probably going to be my last term. And it's going to be hard to train somebody to get that knowledge back in there. The hospital is not your normal business. We, we operate differently. Uh, you know, what's common for us, where well, we bill a dollar and we collect 20 cents. Most business people say, no, I bill a dollar, I should collect a dollar. So it takes a while to get, you know, that type of uh, change to their mindset. And how does healthcare work? Usually the first two, two and a half years of a board member is a learning experience. They, they just don't understand. So it's nice when I've got a, an, a very experienced board. As we're moving through some major changes in healthcare right now, what do we have to do to deliver healthcare? It's easy for me to talk to them and, and run ideas by them because they understand what we're doing. So I was very glad to see Nancy come back on, bring that experience back in there as we're looking at some, you know, changes coming, uh, you know, as a lot of the healthcare plans are folding. So now that changes how we're going to have to deliver health care. Their input helps me decide what we're going to do as we move forward. And you still have the folks at the hospital who could help you through the Affordable Care Act. Correct. Understanding of that and uh, your best bet from that. Yeah, that, I mean, it's working very well having those folks come in here with, uh, you know, if you have questions on your coverage or what coverage do you need, you know, we provide that uh, space for them and they come in and it's just worked out super. They're, they're fairly busy with folks coming in asking about what am I eligible for, how do I get this insurance, how do I get that insurance, and just help them walk through that whole process. It's not an easy process. The, the whole application process is uh, daunting if you've never done it before. And uh, if you know, it helps to have somebody who's been down that path, can sit down with you and say, here's what I need, let me take care of it for you. It's just working great for our folks. And of course, they're uh, just, I guess, to find out their hours, just call the switchboard. Yeah, call the switchboard. Uh, I know they're at least three and a half days a week in the facility and maybe up to four now because I, I think we've extended their time there just because of the response we've had, they've been very busy. So we've, I think we've added either a half day or a full day to their schedule. John, I know Woodlawn Hospital is a big contributor to the Compassionate Care Clinic. How's that going? <clears throat> it's going well. Um, you know, we were kind of concerned. I sit on the board for that clinic that as we move in through all the Affordable Care Act and all the different insurance plans that people are eligible for, were we going to lose our patient base for folks that, you know, are they all going to get insured and, you know, that group there is basically can't be insured. Well, it didn't happen. I mean, we probably lost, I'm guessing, about 40% of our patient base, but we still got that 60% that needs the help that that clinic gives. Now with some of the plans folding and saying, okay, we're no longer going to provide that health insurance, I think we're going to see some of those folks that was enrolled with us before we had to disenroll them when they got insurance. Now that insurance is going away. They're probably going to come back. So uh, they just do a fantastic job out there. They, the folks that they see are very appreciative of that. And the hospitals are appreciative because what was happening before is, you know, people were having an illness that they didn't, high blood pressure, that you don't know you have until it's too late where you're in the back of an ambulance and come to see us. Now with the clinic there, we can help manage the, you know, the high blood pressure, the diabetes, whatever that chronic disease is, we're getting it early getting them on the meds that they need 
so that they're not having to take that ambulance ride to come in to see us at some point later down the road. And it gives a healthier lifestyle for them. Uh, just working a great job out there, those folks. John Alec, President and CEO of Woodlawn Hospital. And uh, as always, we, we appreciate your time. Anything else you'd like to add? I, you know, just as we start moving to the fall, uh, it gets dark earlier and stays dark <laughs> does, later in the day, <laughs> just be careful driving. Uh, you know, we're that time of year, the deer are going to start moving again. And, uh, you know, as we said before, we don't want to see you by accident. So just be careful when you're driving. Watch for the deer and, and watch for the kids going to school. It's dark in the mornings now. Just take a little extra time, slow down, and give people a, a chance to get to their destination. Well said, John Alley. Thank you. Thank you.